And it gives you a momentary sense of control, of superiority, very often, of intelligence, of righteousness, moral high ground. It is true. Uh, because all you normally have to do is prove how terrible the other side is. And for some reason that makes you wonderful. You understand? If they're immoral, well, I can assume I'm moral. You know, I don't think so. You know? <laughs> But that's what morality passes for, is just the dismissing of the other side, the humiliating of the other group. Uh, we don't have time for this anymore. We really don't have time for it. Now, I, I think it's no accident that both in Isaiah and in Paul, when they list what became the, the gifts of the Spirit, I remember asking my professor this. Why are intelligence and wisdom two different gifts? Aren't they the same thing? Uh, why were those distinguished? Well, it, as I'm trying to say in my last book on the two halves of life, I do think intelligence is a gift of the Spirit that serves you very well in the first half of life. It's dualistic thinking. But by the second half of life, uh, if you don't get beyond that, if, if the dualistic game doesn't fall apart for you, and it has to, there has to be some issue about which you can't be totally right. <laughs> some issue that defeats you, humiliates you, that you can't resolve with your rational mind. Huh? That's the necessary suffering, as I call it in falling upward. It's the necessary uh, stumbling stone. And unless you go through the necessary stumbling, you never get to non-dual thinking. So again, we're talking about dying. No one wants to do that. That's never going to be in. It's never going to be popular. It's hard to sell, you know. Uh, this renouncing of the self. But we all know that Jesus, our teacher, said it, you know. Uh, unless the grain of wheat die, except for itself. The mental ego, the autonomous, uh, defended, boundaried me. Unless that thing starts falling apart, you can't get there. But if it dies, it will bear much fruit. So you're the people that we have great hope in, that can bear that much fruit. And certainly our, our world needs that, that kind of fruit. But I warn you, in end, you're a uh, you're not going to fit in to a lot of groups. <laughs> You're not going to fit in to a lot of cocktail party conversation. <laughs> Racist jokes won't make sense to you anymore. Gay jokes won't make sense to you anymore. You just don't have time for that, you know? And there's a kind of loneliness. There's a kind of anxiety. And, and you go through years of, am I crazy? Or am I, am I wrong? Or... Is this really true? That's also the necessary suffering. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. I hope this at least lays a foundation, opens up the field, and uh, whatever I say, I accept Jerry May as my uh, censor and corrector and improver, because he did that with an awful lot of thinking and an awful lot of the work of spirit. Thank you.